Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Thank you for joining today. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I appreciate all the help and love that I can get from you guys, whether it's subscribing, hitting the like button, asking a question, posting a comment, or all of the above. <laughs> all right, so I'm assuming that a lot of you guys got new toys during the holidays, and so I wanted to give you my tour of design space. But for those that are experienced, I think it's always a great way to pick up tips and tricks when you see someone else and how they use the application. I know I used to love to spy on my coworkers. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. This is the landing page for Design Space. And the top part, you're gonna see featured images. Um, I kind of, you know, I don't use this homepage as much as I probably could. Um, I just go straight into new project because I'm gonna start designing my thing and then I'm gonna pick and choose uh, from Design Space images. So let's go to new project. And I'm just gonna replace, but most of the time it will pop up a new project unless you were already working on something. And in here, we'll start from, I always like to go left to right, but we'll start from the bottom, upload. You, that's uploading a, um, any images that you may have uh, saved or bought. So if you bought something from Etsy or Creative Fabrica, all of that, you can go and you can upload it here. Uh, you have shapes. These are your basic shapes. The top part, this is new. The top part is uh, free. The bottom part is included with the subscription. I do have an access subscription because I do find that it's super helpful. I let my membership expire one time and let it lapse. Um, and I found that I actually used it more than I thought. While I don't love design space fonts because I feel like it's limited, it doesn't have like the beautiful fonts that I see everyone else using, like with the glyphs, like the little swirls and stuff. Um, so I do go outside for that. So I have a different membership for that. I use Creative Fabrica for that, which we will discuss another day. But um, I find that you do make up in time and then also a little bit of money you, that you save by being an access member it's saving but you gotta buy to save but when cricut does have a, a sale which they have one right now for instance like black friday um with your access membership you get an additional discount and so i find that there are some things that i buy exclusively through cricut and i feel as if the value is there with the membership. But all right, so these are, you know, like I said, images, sh basic shapes that are included, but all of these shapes you can find in images. So images is the library where it houses all of the images, images that you've uploaded and images that are included with access and then free ones as well. Um, let's just click on one so I can show you what the shape what you can do a little bit in design space. So when it comes in, you can make, it's locked. It comes in automatically locked. You can unlock it here or you can lock and unlock up here. It works the same way as, you know, everything else. If you unlock it, you can kind of warp this shape. You can make it skinnier. Um, but if you keep it locked, you can make it bigger and smaller by using this um, arrow down here or you can go up here and actually change the actual dimensions right like if you wanted 5.25 for instance um, so here you have this I think one of the most basic things that I had a hard time with when I first started is I was I was <laughs> I wanted to personalize a lot of things and I had a hard time doing um, what I wanted in my head to make it work into design space. So one of the popular things that I saw and wanted to do is, um, for instance, I wanted a, a word to be taken out of an image. So I'm going to type in my daughter's name, Charlotte, and we're going to go basic today, right? We'll do more complicated things another day. But let's say you, you know, I wanted the name Charlotte to be taken out of this. So I'm gonna make it smaller so it fits within here. And what you wanna do is you wanna grab the two items and you wanna go to align because you want things to be aligned properly. So I'm going to align it, center it. And in this case, because it's a circle, I could 
actually, I should center it completely. Um, center this one. So it's gonna be both top and bottom and side, right? So now it's centered and then I'm gonna slice it. I want the name to be taken out of, sliced out of this um, little circle petal thing. So now I can remove this and I have the name out of my shape. A lot of times, like the one that was really popular when I first started, you would see a bear and then the word mama taken out of it, same idea. Um, the other thing that I struggled with was I wanted a little, like a hole punch or something. So you would go and you would take um, a circle. Where's my circle? There it is. And did my circle not come in? Okay, let me click on it again. So let's, I'm gonna, you know, make it like a ornament or a gift tag, right? So I'm gonna take this, put it up here. And then now I'm gonna grab these two items and slice. So slicing, you can only slice two items at one time. So in this case, I'm slicing the scalloped um, item with my circle. What I could not do is, for instance, if I wanted to slice out Charlotte here, and let's say I wanted to slice out Charlotte down here, I cannot do all of these at one time. So you see how it's grayed out? I can only select two items to slice out at one time. I could slice out, I know there's a Charlotte underneath this scalloped thing, right? So if my mouse only grabs this top portion, I'm grabbing the scalloped um, little petal thing, and then I'm grabbing the Charlotte that's behind it. And see, now slicing is available. It's not grayed out. So I'll slice it so that you can see it. Okay, and then we know there's a Charlotte underneath, right? So I can go from the bottom. If I go from the bottom, it's only picking up what my mouse is covering. So I'm covering the bottom of this scalloped piece, and then I have the Charlotte that's underneath. So that's two items. If I went from the top to the bottom, I'm picking up a lot of things. Everything that's hidden here, it's more than two items. So if I wanted to do that, I can do this and slice. If you only pick up one item, you also cannot slice, right? The magic number is two. <laughs> so let me show you what that looks like now. All right, so there you have Charlotte. Um, so let's see, text is very simple. You click on it, you type, you know, Charlotte, and you can change your font up here. So I'll show you one of my favorite fonts. So when you click on the pick list, you can go to search and you can type in the font that you want, or you can browse. You can just keep scrolling to see something that you like. So here's a beautiful, beautiful font. Now, if you can see, and it's a lot easier to see in a different color. So let me clean up, let me get rid of these little circles. When you have these script fonts, um, they don't they come in connected these days but they don't come welded and what i mean by that is let me change the color so like we can talk about this it's easier to see in the purple and then let me ungroup this and i'm going to show you so this c i'm going to move it to the front so i'm going to arrange send to the front so you see how the c this top part, it curves in, it's curving into the space of the H. The way we have it right now, if we want to go cut this, whether it's cardstock, adhesive vinyl, iron-on vinyl, it's gonna cut out the C, it's gonna go into the H, and then the H is gonna cut out, and it's gonna cut out part of this C right here. So the letters aren't blended together. Here's the difference. If we were to grab all of this, and you can see that here with the T as well, right? If we click weld, then it becomes one piece. And you see, you'll see here that it all just flows in. The C 
is welded into the H and so it's not going to cut out that little portion right there. The C, so if you think about if you were to like do paintbrush or something, then the paint will flow all the way in. Now, um, let me undo this for a second because I also want to show you something else. What's different? So if you look over here on our um, the right hand side text pane or image, um, you'll see that each one of these letters are its own separate thing, right? So once I go to weld it, so I'm going to grab all this and I'm going to weld it. It's going to take each one of these line items and it's going to make it into one image that's totally connected together. Okay, now, do you see how there's like a little space right there? Let me show you contouring. So when you click on an image like this, contouring allows you to easily remove things from an image. So anything that's enclosed, like this space that's enclosed within the C or the A right here, you can click on it. So let's say I wanted to remove this. So I clicked on that little piece, right? So now it's gone. Um, go back to contouring. This is more helpful when you have like, I'm just gonna remove this just so you can see what it looks like. So see, I removed that spot. This is more helpful for when you have like, um, let's say on this one you no longer want that hole you can just go to contour and you can remove it so there right so that's contouring okay let's go and see what else we can do we can go into images and here you can search the library there's so many things in here um, hundreds of thousands of images so you can search um santa And it's nice to just have all of these available to you. Kind of what I was saying with the Access membership. Oh, I like being able to just search and browse through there and then just say, okay, I'm going to use this image as opposed to finding out the image that I want to use, then go find it somewhere else that's free, download it, then upload it into the system. So Yes, there's a free way to do, you know, a lot of things, but this to me is worth having Cricut access. So it's taking a little, it's a little bit slow today. I imagine that there are a lot of people on their computer right now. <laughs> so here are all the different Santas that you can use. So you can see it's, um, it's just cute and fun. Let me show you this one, okay? I know this is not the image of Santa that we were thinking of, but you click on it, it's um, highlighted, you can see the green all around it, and then you go to Add to Canvas. So now it'll be part of your canvas and you can design with it. Uh, the reason why I picked this one, I wanted to show you contouring. So let's say you saw this and you actually just liked the shape, okay? So you can go to Contour and you can easily click hide all. It's gonna hide everything but the shape. Um, let's say you want Santa in it, but you don't want all these stars and whatever. So you can go and you can click here. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's what I want. Um, Wait, did I? No, this is what I want. I, I accidentally unclicked it. <laughs> um, so you can scroll over here and find all the pieces or you can individually click on it. So like, okay, I'm just gonna go out of it so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So you, it's just fast to contour and kind of edit your images. Um, it's everything that's contained within that image is what you can contour. All right. Um, you have projects so you can merge your projects. You have templates so you can make, you can put a t-shirt on here so that gives you an idea of how big the t-shirt is and how big your image is. 
Then over here, each one of these items, you can change what you're doing with it. Right now it's basic cut. So it can cut and you can put in your material to your machine. So you can cut cardstock, vinyl, um, washi tape, sticker paper, so many different things you can cut, right? But that's not all you can do. You can use your different tools and make it wavy. You can perforate it. You can draw. You can put a pen in and draw it. So for Charlotte, if I didn't want to cut it, but I actually wanted to draw it, it will draw this out onto a piece of paper. So you can do like coloring pages. You can write notes, um, all of that. Okay. You can click up here and edit, so cut, copy, or paste, or you could do it just like you would with Word. Control C, Control V, Control, wait, cut. Uh, cut, I guess, what would be cut? I can't remember. But copy is Control C, Control V is paste, right? Um, okay, and cut, you just delete. <laughs> okay, um, let's look at this name, Charlotte. You can do an offset, which I love to do. So when you click on offset, it's the outline. This little line is zero, it's neutral. This ball can go make a bigger outline, as you can see, or it can make a negative, an internal offset. So it can get smaller on the inside. Um, you can move the ball or you can type in how big you want the offset to be and then you can apply it. Once you apply it, you'll see it here. Offsets are great so that you can, when you put it on a tumbler, for example, or you put it on a notebook, it just has like the solid background so that it's easy to read from a distance. Sometimes the materials are hard to, you know, to, to see. So it's nice to have that offset. Offset is also nice, like when you're doing cake toppers, it just gives you the layers on all your projects to make it stand out and to make it look really polished. All right, um, let's see. Arrange, You, I think you saw me already, you can click things and move it forward and backwards. I mean, technically when this is all layered, you can go and put them however you want to, but arranging it helps you kind of, you know, visually, um, see how your project is going. You can flip things easily, right? You can flip it. So you see what that looks like. Um, all right, over here, I just want to show you a couple of things and then we can get off so that you can start creating on your own. The layers. So layers is everything that's on your canvas, right? Um, you can hide it so then you don't see it anymore you can um, make it visible again. This tells you what, what's happening with each one of these images. Like this red Santa, it's a basic cut. Um, this one we changed to draw, so it's using a pen to draw. Um, you can go to color sync. Right now we only have two colors on our um, in our canvas, but I can easily move this up here so you could change, this helps more when you have like a ton of colors, it's easy to sync up to your colors. You can duplicate any image, you can delete it or just hit delete on your keyboard. Um, and I'm gonna show you flatten. Let's see, let's go to an image really quickly. I use flatten a lot to do stickers but flatten is basically anytime you print and cut something. So for instance, let's look at this one. I'm gonna add it to the canvas. So normally if you cut out something, cardstock or vinyl, um, you can also flatten it so that it goes to your printer. Your printer will you know, print it out on paper and then you can bring it back to the Cricut to cut. So for instance, let me move some of these things over so you can see this. Let's say we wanted to do this stick as a sticker, okay? And we didn't wanna layer it, we wanted to print it. Then what you would do is you would grab these, this item right here and go to flatten. And now it's a print and cut. So it's going, you're gonna, when you go to make this, it's gonna to go to your printer, it's gonna print, and then because we don't wanna use our scissors or our X-Acto knife to cut out in between and cut out this beautiful Santa perfectly, 
you can now put it after it prints you can send it to your Cricut machine and it will cut all around it so it's great to make stickers um, what else do I use print and cut for if I'm doing cake toppers and I wanted a specific character it can cut all around the character with all the details that I wouldn't be able to replicate with vinyl or with cardstock um, all right so I feel as if that's the basics so let's say we want to go and make everything now so everything that's on this canvas we want to go to make it when you click make it nothing happens yet so you haven't gone anywhere that's you know too far <laughs> um, this first one you see it's print then cut so you're gonna send it to your printer and then it's gonna come out looking like this you're gonna put it on your mat and it will cut all around perfectly here is our second image this one says it's when you send this to your, when you put it on the mat and send it to your Cricut machine, it's going to take a pen and it's gonna draw this outline for you. This is our basic cut. This mat, it's cutting out every little thing. So this little guy up here, I don't remember. We must have sliced something out. So it's gonna cut just like this. All right, I hope that was enough to get you started. Let me know what you think, anything that you want answered. I will always be checking comments and I can either address it in the comments again or I could do a deep dive tutorial on that item. All right, thank you so much. Have a great time with your Cricut.